So, you guys know, because we prepared for it, that you're going to be talking about the books. The first person that's going to be asking a question is Godson, and you guys are going to discuss it. So, Godson, why don't you go ahead and ask a question. So, first I'm going to be talking about the book Call of the Wild. You know this book, the main character is Buck, and, and I'm going to talk about ask about when he moves from America to Alas to the Alaskan Yukon. So how do you think his life changed as he moved to Yukon? I think I think America is known for a land of freedom and land land of anyone can be anything. So I think we can say to Bob that was the thing, right? Mm. The, the, to Bob America was this comfort zone. Even though even though his life was not that not not that great. At least it was his comfort zone. His life was always saying, do this, do that, do this, do that. It was repeating. But as soon as he got out of there and moved to transfer to this place, then he got out of the comfort zone and that's how he needed to embrace the wild, I guess, by facing uncertainties and stuff. The question was, um, how did he change? Yeah, how does life change? Yeah, I think his life changes from him being a, a easy and domestic dog, from being like a pet, literally a pet, to being a very wild dog, to learning the instinct of survival, having to fight for his own life, having to live with other dogs that will kill him if he fails, actually kill him if he fails, and having to like be traded with um, different owners. And being stolen, being taken, being almost killed, and having to bring in big fight, and then finally being the leader of being the being a leader of an entire pack. So he goes from being a very calm dog to learning the instinct of survival. We can definitely just call this like uh we can tell this a growth story, what people like call like you can technically see this as like Coming of age story, but for dogs. For dogs. Well, yeah, to back up his idea, like Spitz, the dog who threatened him, and uh, they're like I think that I think Spitz kind of symbolizes the uncertainty. As yeah, well. Buck wasn't normally that type of dog that attacks and is fierce and aggressive, but he had to in order to defend himself against. It's like a, it's like a trial to yeah. grow up. <laughs> All right, I don't think so. Our next question. I think it's called. It's titled Call of the Wild. Hmm. Because even the first time he does go to the wild being owned by um, sled owners, right? He gets owned by sled owners to be a sled dog. I think it's called Call of the Wild because even in the beginning, he's pretty calm. He looks around, he sees other dogs fighting, he sees, he sees one dog getting involved to death. And then throughout the entire book, he's as he spends more time in the wild, he gets more and more aggressive, learns more and more fighting styles, learns more and more how to be a group leader, and eventually being the group leader. So call the wild as in he's leaning into his survival instincts, his animalistic instincts. I think a call of the wild is something like that. It's, it isn't like what Daniel said, but but it's called a lot of people summarize the entire story. It's about this one dog literally transforming into this this wild, completely, completely nature instinctly dog, different from the first time. And that transformation happens throughout the book. As he gets transferred, he defeats Spitz. And I think meaning the human, the what's human's name, God? And what's the human name he meets like in the middle of the book? What? Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna say a random Canadian person. Uh, he meets his Are you talking about the one who he falls in love with? Yeah. That like Buck forms a real like, team real relationship. Yeah. That's John Thornton. Yeah, John Thornton. I think meeting John yeah. Thornton. Thornton. John Thornton yeah. was like an arc of him losing his connection against the humanity. So with John Thornton dying, with his only connection to humanity, only connection with not the only blockage of not becoming this wild and was broken. As soon as he was killed. So I think that's why it's called Call of the Wild. Every single step of becoming a wild is now completed. Now you can understand the Call of the Wild. I think. Maybe. Alright, um, good job. Let's switch it out. Uh, everybody rotate to your left. <laughs> oh, 
Um, then you'll, this is the podcast this. will be back. Shortly. You'll get, yeah, you'll get to ask some more questions later, guys. Well, this, this is like a podcast. Um, but this is fun. Is it fun? Yeah, it's kind of giving us the letters that we can do. Okay, my book is going to skip the other editor. It's... Lord Lord of the Flies? Yes, that one. Right. My, since this is my favorite book, a uh, quick summary. Well, that book is about how kids being shipped off somewhere else because of a war, they get accidentally trapped on an island. And through, through that island, they have to learn to survive. But meanwhile, trying to learn how to survive, their true human instincts show up and then they kill each other. They become more and more wild. They become more and more crazy until they're finally safe and then they realize that we are all crazy now. So my questions are, what do you think the author is trying to explain to this book? I think, I think author is trying to explain the human nature. Like because children are supposed, are supposed to be this pure, blank state, just not evil, not good, just as pure kids. So putting those kids on this rough situation, this pure kids, I think the author is trying to say any living organism can turn savage and wild. Anyone can be villain of villain fight. Uh there was one part of the book that like it meant blank slate. I remember that. So I think just like Jeff said, when they when their the children are born, they are basically blank blank slates and through experiences they eventually learn more and more and become like more more mature and more different. Mm-hmm. But living on an island with no supports to help them mature up is gonna really affect mm-hmm. their mental state and it's gonna be very hard for them to to like think straight and they have to just do it there. But also I think the theme of the book also has to do with energy and rules. Like that, you know, what what's like the a shell. Shell or like a shell. So society so it's, it kind of shows the needs of society and it sh- and it shows what happens if the society breaks. I think that's another theme of the book. Alright, so yeah, the show, I would think the show represents society does. Or like one thing that can keep all society. And that happens. monster is fear of unknown, fear yeah, of Yeah, that energy. monster that's not even exist existing is the fear of the unknown. And I think the, that show represents their integrity, how well they can stay together and their rules and their connections. But once that show breaks, that's when they find the yeah, once, once their show breaks with the symbol, their character that symbolizes rule. Kind of yes, because it's not. like one good, one bad. The monster is the bad thing, the show is the good thing. Once that good thing breaks, the bad thing takes over everything. So then they all go crazy. This things are dying and then but are you, you think you think they're truly crazy? I think by that point it's I some people could call it crazy. You think they're going crazy or they're just following their natural instincts? Oh. Some people could call it crazy because they think no child would ever do this. They don't see children as doing this. Yeah, but they're still so, humans. Yeah, exactly. But people always have the mentality like adults. They have um they're more experienced, but they also could be doing this because they have they know about the struggles of life for kids. They don't know, they're only peaceful and then they don't have any ex- that many struggles. Mm-hmm. So then so so then people see kids as like innocent little kids. But then here, if they saw these kids doing this, they were like, These kids are probably like crazy. Yeah. But most people who do know that kids are still humans would be like, these kids are just following what any human will also do in that situation. There is no human on earth, probably, that can't go crazy in this moment, probably. So, my second question is, um, why do you think they started losing themselves? Okay, uh, because, so that, you know that there's a barrier of protection when you have your parents with you. When you're alone, you have to fend on to yourself, and at this time, they just appear on an island, like out of nowhere. So this barrier of protection just left them. So now they don't really know exactly what to do because their parents are not there to help them. They don't know, they're not like, and as you grow older, you, un- you more and more, you gradually understand the needs of working and living to survive. But here, you, they're, they're just little children that have not even gotten to that point where they need to think about that. So now it's just, 
every man for himself, basically. I think the reason why they went crazy because they know what high how society is supposed to function. Because if they're let's say if they're like age one, they know nothing about the world and they just drop into alley with no resources. I'm pretty sure they won't go crazy. Because that's the only part of life they know, survive. But since they know how the normal world works, now they could like now they could like consider to go crazy because they were saying I don't I don't know how to explain it. So Maybe what I'm trying to talk about because since you knew how the society worked, they're trying to reform the society in this weak world where the society the society will break eventually because they're kids. So I think with them knowing how basic society works, I think that was a problem. And I think creating that shell as this source of power was the beginning of the insanity. Because if someone, if one person could have power to talk, then everyone would then want the power, natural instinct, because they're of natural instinct, they want to be dominant. So because of the power and their shape of society, that drove them insane. Can I pause here and ask, are you saying that because they had a little bit of knowledge of society, yeah, that's the that the little society understand. was more dangerous than no society at all? Yeah, because if they know little society, then they would like to recreate them, but they don't have enough power to do that. Yeah, that's interesting. And um, then we just go to crap. Yeah, you could see that uh, if someone was a trained surgeon, a trained heart surgeon, they could save your life. But if you'd only gone through two months of heart surgery school, and then you tried to perform heart surgery, you'd probably just end up killing someone. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Um, all right, let's rotate to the left. Let, remind, let me remind you to please only ask the question if you are in the questioner seat. Do not give your own answer, Daniel. That's okay, though. Uh, I like hearing your opinion. It was great. But yeah, let's uh, let's try and keep the questions to the questions. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's be honest. We call that editorializing. No editorializing. Okay, go ahead. I'm being honest. I think we get prepared, but I got one question. Don't be that honest. <laughs> <laughs> I have one question that that is from To Kill a Mockingbird, but it goes through all the books. Like all the books, all the characters. So, since the model of Kill a Mockingbird, because the sense of Kill a Mockingbird is that they don't do nothing but don't cause harm, they sing up to make us abuse or to kill us, to sin to kill the mockingbird. So, except with, with excluding to kill a mockingbird. In all of the books, which character is mockingbird? Ah, I like that question so much. Why didn't I think why didn't I think of that question? That's such a good question. <laughs> Pony Boy is in the outsiders, probably. I want to choose at least three characters and say it right now. Three characters, at least them. Piggy. Piggy and oh yeah. More, um, Lord of Fies is uh is walking bird. Because Jockey broke there's a there's a in there's a point where he gives a good idea. Let's make a tent so we can have shelter. Everyone ignores that. They don't like tents. And then and then I think they they regret it. Piggy never really Piggy I think does, but not truly goes insane. He doesn't really start being that violent. But then he also dies a horrific death when he falls and then Burning shadows and everything everywhere. So I think Piggy's a mockingbird because he's not done anything truly wrong yet he died. Um, for the outsider, I think that's yeah. Pony Boy. Uh, what other books are there? Stargo. Uh, for in Stargo, well, Stargo is the biggest mockingbird because. Throughout the entire book, people have also been offending her and the way she dresses, the way she is. But she's just been making, but she's just been playing her guitar. So she's literally making music while everyone is offending her, which is which could be seen as killing Mockingbird. But she's been pretty peaceful, yet yeah, people are offending her, and then she goes away later, but not because of that. So I think Starbo was a you know, Mockingbird. And 
Touch on what he said. The thing in the book, um, uh, what was the victim of cry? There are many mockingbirds. Mm. It's basically the whole Logan family that are mockingbirds. But one of the mockingbirds, I can't remember his name, is that tall man who comes to their house and he's living with them. And he's like an assistant to the to Mr. Logan. TJ. TJ Morrison. Uh, yeah, L LJ? TJ. Okay. No, no, no. LJ. LJ Morrison. Yeah. Yeah. The strong man. LT? LT. Yeah. The one who looks at the car. Yeah, him. Yeah. And he doesn't seem like a very harmful character. He doesn't seem dirty. He may be strong, he may be strong, like muscular, he may be like a little fierce, but he's just a nice person. Yet, uh, they try to get him in trouble with the white people. Uh, and he helps the, the Logan family. He, he helps the people in general. He seems like a nice person. I can't remember exactly the stuff he does, but. I, I don't think that that he is really trouble, but yet the white people just seem like he is. Just assume that, that he can turn against them, and they want to have him in. Yeah. Which interrogation yard? Did you review that here? No, we didn't read that. Okay. You can discuss it if you want. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. If you've all read it. I have not read it, but go ahead. Okay, then that book. Oh. Bridge, bridge. Bridge 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 I don't know what what the no, no. the Marking version in that book would be the two children who create their own Wonderland. These who create their own Wonderland and by the swing they can enter the Wonderland and live happily. These two children are marking her well all go and what will fly if the children go insane or just succumb to their instincts. They the kids in in the British Caribbean, they don't go insane. They just create their own Wonderland, their own kingdom. So like the Mockingbird. Yeah, so they're the Mockingbirds because by the end of it, um one of them dies and the other one is just really sad. But they are both they're both good friends and I don't think they're that like good friends with anyone at school or anything else, but they're them both are really good friends and then they've been playing together for a lot of times, they were hanging out a lot. But the Mockingbirds, if one of them dies, they're both not really friends with anyone at school, so that's why I think they're Mockingbirds. Okay. You? Mm. Oh, and the boy in the Strike Pajamas, obviously. Mm, there you go, there you go. The boy in the Strike Pajamas. Uh, mm. He's just trying to be a friend for Bruno. He, he, you can see that, even though it's. Oh, um, you mean the uh, the Jewish boy? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Shmuel. Shmuel. Yeah, Shmuel. Even though he, he like, even though we can see it from Bruno's perspective in a childish way, we can still know the horrible things he has to go through. He's there, barely enough food for him, barely enough water. The shelter is packed with people. The small room packed with different people, but Jewish people. Um, and life is horrible for him. He's always hungry. He looks very skinny, and he's he's not really he's not really done anything specific to the nasty people at this time. Yet they kept him here in this because he's just because he's Jewish. So I think he's a mockingbird. Mm. Also, also when uh, Shmuel comes over to Bruno's house and Bruno just tries to feed him, and he's just really hungry. He eats it, and he gets um, punished for it really badly. I think he was beaten. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why I think he was mocking her. Okay. All right. Great. Let's rotate to the left, and we've got some. It's your second turn. You can ask. You don't have to focus on just the first novel's questions. You can ask any questions, whether they're late or early or middle. Okay. Any questions? Uh, if you thought of some new ones, go ahead and ask those. What makes Pony Boy an outsider? Mm-hmm. Uh. I, I feel like Pony Boy is an outsider because, well, what are the two groups named again? The socials and the outsiders. Because uh, the, 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 the socials and the researchers. Because how the society looks at them is because socials and researchers op oppose each other because we're different from them, or we're different from them. But to the society, they're same. They're, rebel they're rebellion. They just rebel with kind of no cause. So I think they're out there all outsiders, not only Pony Boy. 
every single one of those people are, are considered to be outsiders. Because how society looks that way. And even though they don't think they are. Why is Funny Boy an outsider? Did I kill Funny Boy? I was just an activist. Hmm? I was just an activist. Hmm. What was the, the guy, his name who said like stable Funny Boy? His name was Johnny, right? Yes. Hmm. Okay, so Johnny, Johnny and Funny Boy were considered as both the outsider because they both ran away from their respective groups. And they both lived in like a on top of a church, right? Reading a book. And Funny Boy is an outsider, I think, because of his different views than his group and the socials. He still doesn't like the socials, but I don't I don't think he's a true greaser, I guess. Not really part of that group as well. So he's an outsider to both groups. Mm. Oh. Uh, what do you think, Gotson? You said you wish oh, you could answer this. What yeah. do you think? So, from what I saw, uh, from when I recapped on the book, he, just like Jeff said, he's, they're all basically outsiders, but what Pony Boy makes himself feel more like an outsider because he thinks that, like, he's very, he's kind of an introvert mm. in the sense that it's hard for him to, like, be social. And his only, like, true friends are people in his group, his brother. And Johnny. Okay. All right, my next question. Wait, hold on. Uh, before you ask the next question, I'm going to stop this and restart. Okay. Okay.